Welcome to Navigating Change, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Pete Wright, and I'm here with Howard Teibel, president of Teibel, Inc. Howard, how are you? Good. How are you, Pete? I'm doing very well. It's been too long. I, I share that. I'm excited to be talking with you about this. Me too. I'm very excited about this. You are going to the uh, the NBOA conference uh, coming up this uh, in in November. Uh, National Business Officers Association. the The uh, topic this year is change leadership in the 21st century. Now, yeah, this Howard- is very exciting because this is uh, this is their strategic leadership forum, and it and it really focuses on. From a, it's a perfect time because uh, whether it's an independent school or a higher ed institution, or you know, we're, there's so many places where you're seeing this uh, play out. There is a recognition that we need to step back and think about what does it mean to really do things differently. And I think the the focus that I'm going to be bringing is really about helping these leaders uh, follow through on what they know they need to do. Uh, but have a bit of a way to step back and think about well, what does this mean in terms of my own leadership? Uh, what are the things that we should be focusing on? How do we get this so that it is about uh, doing the best of what we're great at and discarding all those things that are that are taken away from our ability to be as good as we know that we already are, but somehow we're not demonstrating that out in the world. Uh, and that, that is the, that I think of the focus. I mean, there's going to be some other great thought leaders at this, uh, at this conference. So I'm really excited to share my experience around change. Well, I just want to talk a little bit more about your, your first session on the, on the, uh, the, the first day of the, the session is, is, uh, around change leadership. And, and, uh, you know, you bring up a really good point about what leaders are being forced to do right now, right? They're, they're, they're having to really, you know, uh, put, uh, you know, a, a great deal of the institution at, you know, at stake when it, in, in a period of high risk in the education economy, and there's just great uncertainty and there's great fear. And I, I, I wonder what, you know, what it is, uh, or, or how you get the organization through this, this perspective of leadership to, to, uh, reposition, to take on big challenges. So I was recently in a cabinet meeting and I looked at the group and I, and I said to them, including the president, I said, you realize there is not an answer here. And it's not what they wanted to hear. But when we talked about it more, the, the recognition is, and I think this is happening everywhere, and we get, need to give ourselves more permission to tell the truth about this, is that we're in, in many cases, a crisis or a transition point. And when I say crisis, I think of it more as an opportunity versus something that uh, you know, we're going to fall off the edge. It feels like we're going to fall off the edge of the cliff. But in fact, we need to step back as leaders and figure out who we need to bring into these conversations around us, identify what the problem really is, come up with a collaborative way of saying, this is what we're working towards, and then be willing to move it in that direction. Now, everything I just said sounds good. The The execution of this is hard because we haven't had to exercise this muscle. We have talked ourselves out of big change because we hope for things getting back to normal. And my experience, and I think a lot of our experience out there and the media is portraying this in terms of how they're characterizing uh Tuition increases are no longer sustainable. The pressure is coming from everywhere right now. And I think institutions are truly on the hook right now to come up with new ways of offering value, but making it accessible uh, to the people that they're, they're trying to reach out to. It, it seems like, um, you know, we, we existing systems uh, are are stressed in this climate. You know, I mean, we are we're sort of accustomed to thinking of uh, more of a culture of accountability. Of you know, if there's a finance problem, clearly it's the finance officer's fault. Uh, you know, they're the ones who need to go address that. And if there's a if there's an admissions challenge, uh, you know, clearly it's enrollment's fault. They need to go, you know, do more marketing. Uh, but that's not quite what you're saying here. Yeah, and you you bring up a really great point that we're going to talk about, and that. If we think about how you're going to get through this, 
uh, we need to break out of that silo mentality and recognize that the finance division or the enrollment management people or the deans uh, for their respective areas not only need help, but they need a perspective that's outside of their area. They need the, you know, the, the, the academic side need a finance perspective. The finance people need the academic perspective. And what the, the dialogue is really about solving this together. The reason things don't change is because we know that we have to get buy-in from these other groups, but we don't think that we're going to bring them in. We're going to inform them after we've made the decision. That doesn't work. But the alternative, and this has been playing out for years, and for 25 years I have seen this play out, where institutions in one breath or leaders in one breath say, let's let's make some decisions and then we'll find some way to have people feel that they're that we're including them when in fact what they're really doing is informing others this is what they think and they don't take the time to say what is your perspective on this uh, and, and I've got I've got more examples uh, to share that are for those institutions that are effectively, involving a broader base to be part of the solution and those that are still in that silo mentality. And this is something we have to break out of. And this is something that we really have to discipline ourselves to catch ourselves when we're thinking we have the answer. Uh, and maybe we need to reach out to those who are using our mm -hmm. services uh, more to get, is what we're doing really working? Involving parents, involving students, involving trustees, right? That's scary. Because you might hear things you don't want to hear. Absolutely. And so, you know, the morning you're going to be challenging, uh, challenging folks to to hear the things they don't want to hear and, and really look at a framework for not uh, necessarily, uh, you know, using a template sort of strategic plan and, and building a framework around it, but really addressing how you approach complex change in a climate of fear uh, and how to overcome it and and uh, and and make tough decisions as a community. And this is going to build off of Grant Lichtman, Lichtman's work, uh, which is really something that I think between what he's going to share on the first day about what he sees the landscape is around independent schools and who are the best of the bunch and what they're doing, the focus on our side and the focus of my work is really about translating that into action. All right, so what does this mean that you've got these strategic ideas, how are you going to execute on them? And then we're going to focus on how to uh, take those ideas and build them into your organization. Excellent. And so to follow up on that point, uh, later on Monday, you'll be uh, jumping right into a, uh, a, a concept or, or a talk that you're talking uh, that you frame as uncovering innovation and mapping business processes. How do the how does this relate to the morning's work? What's what's interesting about uncovering innovation is that what I've been speaking to a lot more these days is that what we need to do a better job of is not figure out what the innovation is, but empower people to be better innovators. And this is not about going back to school and needing to get a whole new degree around innovation. This is about learning how to work together. And innovation is really a collective experience. It's about bringing together different understandings to a problem and then having the insight and the ways of mapping these. And this is what we're going to do too in the afternoon, which is how do you not just bring the right people together, but then effectively brainstorm and there's a discipline to do that well, and there's a discipline to do decision-making well. And we have gotten lazy over the years because we don't recognize that those are different domains, that there's a beginning and an end to brainstorming, and there's a clear beginning and end to decision-making, and we blur those lines. So what we're going to do in the afternoon is spend some time really working through how do you keep people focused so that you can do great brainstorming, and so you can effectively get through decision-making, and we'll be doing some exercises around that and, and learning some techniques around that. That uh, sounds like a, a fantastic way to to really maximize the morning's work as well uh, that you are that you're dealing with um, actually building this framework, a visual framework to execute. That's right.
it it, it is I, I know that I'm a visual learner. I think a lot of people are visual learners. We need to get better at uh, getting ourselves out of these, uh, not that there's anything wrong with the white papers, but getting into uh, cutting to the chase and, and basically saying, what is the problem we're trying to solve? What does success look like? What does failure look like? There are some very simple things you can do that can raise very quickly uh, where you're trying to go. And we're going to spend some time uncovering that and experimenting with that. The session uh, 2012 Strategic Leadership Forum uh, from the National Business Officers Association is happening in Chicago, Illinois, November 4th through 6th, 2012. Uh, you can find more information at nboa.net uh, and just look for the 2012 Strategic Leadership Forum right there on the front page. And, and you can find out how to register and, and uh, join Howard and the rest of the, uh, the great program uh, in Chicago this year. Howard, thanks so much for your time today. You're welcome, Pete. Thank you.